There are no railings, there are no fences, there's absolutely nothing to keep the wildlife off trail. So it's really important that we stay close together as a group. Um, it, it helps us basically look larger. These black bear respect size, and if they see something much larger than them moving down the trail, the chances of them acting aggressively or something like that drop very sharply. There's never been a documented case of a black bear attacking a group of more than four people. And uh, the last thing to note, guys, is wild edibles. We are surrounded by a plethora of different edible foods, but I have to, have to ask you to please refrain from picking and eating this stuff. The, the, we can go to the grocery store, the wildlife can't, you know. And uh, we can head on up. Uh, I guess one more final thing to note, though. Uh, I'm a local here. I've lived in Alaska my entire life. I'm a nationally certified guide. I've been doing this for five years. If you have questions about anything you see along this walk today, give me a few spots. right here. Uh, in any case, it's a really important part of their diet because it kind of loosens everything up in them. And this is kind of a hard thing to explain here. They, <laughs> When they go into hibernation, where right before that they're eating all the salmon that they can, they're putting on as much body mass as possible so they can go to that deep sleep. Now right before they go to sleep, they eat a pulpy fibrous material that basically undigestible. It's like cork and it blocks up, it is a cork, it blocks up their bowels and it basically prevents them from wasting nutrients in the middle of hibernation. Nobody likes to do that, right? Waste yeah. nutrients in their sleep. Um, so they come out of hibernation essentially starving and constipated. That's not a good combination. And uh, the skunk cabbage, the root of it, the acids that produce that heat act as a natural um, uh, laxative, basically. And uh, it's the only thing available for them to eat in the spring. It's the only thing that'll really get the ball rolling, too. So it's a pretty important relationship see a spot where it's a little there's a little less dense there's not quite as much life on the forest floor it looks fairly eroded there's some exposed tree roots and things like that it just cuts right up there it looks kind of like it's been eroded away and that's basically from years and years of these black bear trafficking the area not allowing that vegetation to fill in the blank and the best way to tell a disturbed area is by this leafy green alder tree this is called the red alder and it's a pioneer species of tree it's one of the first ones to occur in damaged or disturbed areas in the forest. Say there's a landslide where all the soil is peeled away or a parking lot or a road or whatever. It's the first thing to start growing. And as it grows, it pulls nitrogen from the atmosphere and charges it into the soil. And it basically makes that soil fertile enough to sustain the growth of our evergreens, like our western hemlock and our Sitka spruce. Looking at these mushrooms, this is the fruit of that fungus. This is like the orange on the tree or the rose on the rose bush. And the mass of that fungus is actually hidden from your view inside what it's growing on. Now, um, so you're looking at one organism basically inside that tree. It's like a spider web just eating away at that dead dying tree. Or dead or dying tree, that one's particularly dead. But uh, yeah, it, it's pretty amazing stuff. This, this mitorrhizal fungi, this mycelium network, so I'm a little obsessed with it. It's all around us, man. It's like, this is pretty amazing stuff.
female is nursing a cub, she's not mating. Plus, when these black bear come out of hibernation, there's not a lot to eat around. And that little 50 pound cub isn't very fast, he isn't very intelligent, oh. he's easy game. And yeah, if, if a female is, is nursing a cub, she won't mate, and they like to eat, sleep, and you know, like most guys. Um, so in any case, by a little cub escaping up one of these trees, they can go 30, 40 feet up, a 400, 500 pound male, he can only make it six, 10 feet up one of these trees before he stalls out. He can't grapple it correctly or just can't support his weight. So it's a safe point for that cub. This is one of the most medicinal plants that I know of here in the forest. Uh, this is called the Devil's Club, and rightly so, because if you grabbed onto this, you would remember it for the rest of your life. Uh, it's covered in hundreds of thousands of barb tip, mildly toxic thorns, and it, basically they don't come out for a few weeks. They fester, they ooze, they itch, they burn. It's no good. Um, these nice big broad green leaves, they even got them on the bottoms of them, so they can't even use them in a pinch. Never mind. Um, uh, but the reason this plant has such a defensive mechanism is because of all the nutrients stored inside it. This is a member of the ginseng family, and it has multiple medicinal values. It can use, be used to help regulate your metabolism. It can be used to help get rid of headaches, stomach aches. Uh, it can help treat rheumatoid arthritis, uh, multiple different women's issues like menstrual cramps, things like that. The berries were actually used in turn with a few other herbs to help induce labor. submerge like a Sitka spruce or a hemlock or something in the ocean waters, it gets attacked by a mollusk, a member of the clam family. It's actually not a worm. You can see the leftovers of the calcium from its shell and it just eats the wood. four feet of the facet so today we get to just start drawing and possibly by this afternoon we'll start sculpting it. So if you have any questions or anything you can go right ahead and uh, I'm just going to hang out today. Is everything done with hand tools? I cut with a chainsaw but okay. it doesn't make a very good sculpting tool. Uh, these are what you use for, for the actual sculpting. Oh, wow. This one's a new one. Oh, I love this one. This one's really cool. Until we do raise it properly, possibly by September 31st. 